Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, six wards of the state missing from St. Andrew Home. Six female wards of the state have been reported missing from the Homestead Place of Safety in Stony Hill in St. Andrew. They are 15-year-old Nicola Martin, 17-year-old Ashley Wilson, 15-year-old Gillisa Spence, 14-year-old Jada Nephew, 14-year-old Ashani Sinclair, and 15-year-old Shanika Todd. The Stony Hill Police say about 3.15 a.m. on Friday, checks were made around the facility when the girl's absence was noted. The police say their mode of dress at the time they went missing is unknown. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of the six girls is asked to contact the Stony Hill Police at 876-942-2223, Police 119 emergency number, or the nearest police station. Man killed with a garden fork in St. Thomas The Port Morant Police in St. Thomas are investigating a case of a man who was stabbed to death with a garden fork on Thursday. The deceased has been identified as a Kemar Magowan, 38-year-old businessman of Market Road, Port Marante, St. Thomas. The police say about 1 p.m., Magowan was in the Chapel Hill community in Port Marante when the man attacked him with a garden fork. Magowan was taken to the Princess Margaret Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Old Hope Road Institution makes a $3.3 million settlement with a former principal. Disgraced former Minister of Education Royal Reed has been paid $3.3 million in a settlement the Old Hope Road-based Jamaica colleges said would likely be cheaper than litigation. Reed, a former principal of All Boy Institution, is before the court fighting corruption charges. He was seconded from his job as an educator to take up the appointment of Minister of Education in the Andrew Holness administration in 2016. He resigned in March 2019 amid an emerging Caribbean Maritime University scandal. In a statement late yesterday, JC said the school's trust agreed in an out-of-court settlement with Reed to pay the sum. The difficult commercial decision was taken after seeking legal advice and weighing the risk of proceeding with a costly litigation process, Derek Jones, chairman of the Jamaica College Trust, said. He disclosed that the settlement comes at a cost of 10% of the amount at risk. This puts the saga behind us and allows us to consider how best the money which was at risk in the lawsuit can be best used to further the interest of the 1,650 boys who attend Jamaica College, Jones said. In July last year, Reed filed a lawsuit in the Supreme Court against the Trust and the Jamaica College Foundation claiming an amount of $28 million, including interest. Reed's claim was that certain incentives which had been agreed when he was the principal of JC should be paid to him. Even during the period he was absent from the school on secondment and then on special leave to act as a minister of education. He alleged that the arrangements included certain verbal agreements made with the late Danny Williams who occupied several positions connected to JC, including chairman of the school board. Jones said the trust and the foundation consulted with Williams and took legal advice, which was to the effect that they had a good chance of success and so proceeded to file defenses in the lawsuit. Unfortunately, Danny Williams passed in September of 2023, which meant that he would have been unavailable to give evidence to refute the claims of verbal agreements made by Mr. Reed, said Jones. He said, consequently, the trust decided to pursue the option of a settlement with Reed. He said the trust was advised that a trial of the matter would likely take place after several years and at a probable cost in legal fees of approximately $5 million. The total amount at risk was approximately $33 million, Jones said. He expressed the relief with the latest development and said he is now directing his complete focus and efforts towards the further advancement of the school, the staff, and the students. Reed, former CMU president Fritz Pinock, along with Reed's wife Sharon, their daughter Sherelle, and the Jamaica Labour Party councillor for the Brownstone Division, 
Kim Brown Lawrence have been charged with a range of offenses, including breaches of the Corruption Prevention Act, conspiracy to defraud, misconduct in a public office at a common law, and the breaches of the Proceeds of Crime Act. The accused were charged by the Financial Investigations Division following an investigation into nearly $50 million, which was allegedly diverted from the CMU. NSWMA's executive director says the agency must deliver better service. With 32 operational units now in the Western Parks and the Markets Waste Management Limited fleet, executive director of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, Audley Gordon, says that there are no excuses for inconsistent garbage collection. According to Gordon, citizens have been very patient with the state agency and are very deserving of better service. The people have been very patient with us. Whenever they are hard on us, we understand why, because we were not in a position to deliver the service that the people deserve, he said. Gordon was speaking on Thursday morning during the relaunch of Operation Sweep in Montego Bay. The event was also used to announce the addition of 11 new garbage trucks in the region after 50 trucks were handed over to NSWME on Tuesday. The addition to WPM's fleet includes six compactors, two mini compactors, one crane truck, and two tipper trucks. He said that the NSWME has experienced a severe shortage of vehicles over the years. However, since 2016, the authority has received 165 trucks. When I went to NSWME in 2016, all of the trucks that were in operation at the time were over 8 years old. We don't have an excuse now with the trucks. We cannot use trucks as an excuse, Gordon declared. The only problem we have now is how we are going to manage and that is where we have to challenge ourselves as an agency to deliver on behalf of the people because we are now equipped. The executive director also stated that the NSWME is currently at the best place it has ever been. At the same time, the addition of a crane truck will improve the agency's ability to monitor and to take control of the current issue of derelict vehicles, Gordon said. We go move them off the streets, we go clean the place up, and we have the crane truck now. The taxpayers buy the crane, so we go pick up the derelict vehicles off the taxpayers' streets, Gordon stated. There was a known crane truck in the regional agency fleet prior to Tuesday, and Gordon shared that NSWMA had experienced an overall shortage of the vehicle. We had four crane trucks, and when I went there, only two were working, and by now only one. The state agency will also be looking to tackle the issue of bulky waste. However, Gordon pointed out that residents too have a responsibility in ensuring that the waste materials do not take over the streets. So them have an old fridge and instead of making proper arrangements to dispose of it, they toss it out. Some of them wait until they find a little corner that's not so busy and them carry it pan care. It's not right, Gordon said. Speaking to the news after Thursday's event, Edward Muir, regional operations manager at the WPM, welcomed the addition of the 11 new trucks. He believes that the vehicles will amplify his hardworking team to fully carry out their duties. The new garbage collection units will significantly enhance solid waste collection in that a newer fleet reduces the likelihood of breakdowns and maintenance issues, ensuring a more consistent collection schedule and a more efficient service for the communities we serve, Muir said. In the meantime, Gordon is also imploring that the citizens exercise their civil pride by playing an active role in keeping the country clean. We have to have the residents properly containerizing their garbage, so when the truck arrives at a gate, it doesn't have to spend a long time there picking up or raking up. I am calling for civil pride. I am calling for personal responsibility. Let us take responsibility for the solid waste that we generate, Gordon said. Guys, thanks for watching. Please join us this afternoon at 2 p.m. for another news update.